welcome back and welcome if you're new today's video I've had a bit of a thrift trip um, I've got picked up some items specifically for a few things that I'm trying out and as I'm looking around my home I'm realizing I've got quite a few different styles so in this video I'm going to show you how I've taken these thrifted items and adapted them to various styles from a French country to Art Nouveau to Dark Academia so stay tuned and see how I've turned these items into lovely thrifted decor for my home. So I went to a couple of different thrift stores on this day. Uh, Value Village was the main one. Um, I am finding that things are getting very expensive. Um, still finding a lot of little bargains. The bigger bargains don't seem to be there. But um, I'm not sure who's pricing things, whether they're just out of touch with reality or they think that if you can pick it up for the dollar store for $1.25, you should be able to sell it for $2.50 in Value Village. Doesn't make sense to me, but hey, who knows? Like I said, I'm, I'm finding I'm not, I'm definitely being more selective with my purchases. I tend to buy specifically now for things that I know that I need as opposed to sort of stocking up on things because of literally because of the prices on average I would say things are at least three to five dollars more expensive than they used to be um, so um, I have actually been approached a few times by Timu um, they wanted me to do a video for them and I put them off and put them off and thought you know what I'm just not I don't you it's not the type of thing that I do but I did actually go on their website and I found some items and I thought I'm not gonna try it you know if they're gonna give me some stuff and they want me to try it, I feel you know I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest I, I, if it's no good I'm, I'm not gonna do it it's as simple as that I'm not going to tell people to buy things that I wouldn't buy personally because they're poor quality or whatever. So I sent for some items off Timu um, just to see how things were. And honestly, I was really amazed at the quality and the price. So um, I will be uh, in the future doing a, a Timu video, but this is kind of what's prompted this thrift haul because I was looking for specific items um, so as you can see here there's there's still cute things to be had but I mean normally if it's no lid on it to me that's an incomplete set so you know I wouldn't be paying eight dollars for something that's broken or incomplete um, again cute little items here or there and I did find stuff that I brought home with me So this item was a glass cloche. It, I think it's for a cake stand. That was $7.99. I'm keeping that in mind for a Valentine's vignette. I'm not actually decorating the house for Valentine's. I'm just going to do a couple of little vignettes. Um, I think it's different when you don't have little children in the house. So that'll be in an upcoming video. These antlers were, um, I think, $3. And there was, I think, the eight in there. They are Christmas decorations, but... Other than the glitter on them, which I paint out afterwards, what an absolutely great find. That was the universe working in conjunction with me on that day, because I've been looking for those for a little while. This is another lovely piece, um, completely pointless, but it was very nostalgic. I remember seeing these embedded in walls and uh, from, from the post office back in the UK, 249. I could not let this go. It's really heavy, it's like a cast piece. So I'm gonna give that uh, a bit of a, a makeover. Um, I also picked up these glue sticks. They were 3.99, I believe. Now, in the store, just the other week, I picked up some glue sticks, same amount, $20. So I wasn't gonna leave that behind. This piece of trim, I thought it was a piece of trim, I must admit, I knew it was material, obviously. When I opened it up, it's a piece of linen with frayed edges. It's in, I think, about six parts, two smaller pieces and then two longer pieces. It's in four parts, but it is a lovely quality linen. And then it is embroidered with this beautiful blue 
um, it's almost like a vine but it's so pretty so I wasn't sure what I was going to be using it for but I knew for the money I couldn't let it go I think it was a couple of dollars and then I picked up this burlap ribbon for 50 cents I couldn't have got that cheaper anywhere else always pick up frames uh, especially when they're only 50 cents and they're the brass or the coppery ones um, these frames I was looking were specific to the items that I picked up from Timo they I picked up some William Morris prints and I was so pleased with how the quality and the price uh, you won't believe it honestly when you see them so but what I was looking for I had also picked up a couple of little items on a previous thrift that I knew I wanted to frame so frames as I said is always a really good one to pick up now $5.99 for this set I didn't need them I just picked them up because I loved them they look so cool they really needed a good clean as you can see they put them out the shelves without even cleaning them out properly but I couldn't let these go it worked out about two dollars a piece and again I had some great ideas for these so those came home with me as well I also picked up this little thimble display that's what the lady in the store told me it was a dollar uh, and this I turn into a really cool little dark academia display shelf just by adding cardboard and painting it another item that I picked up was this little uh, memorabilia book um, of the Queen's coronation this was a dollar um, really like that so I've used that this is the Timu these are the Timu items that I picked up I just wanted to see what the quality was like I figured I'll grab a few things and see how it goes before I tell them no that's what I thought so I got the ribbon for five dollars it's the black velvet ribbon which I have a hard time getting without spending a fortune on these pieces of paper these are lovely quality and they're like botanicals and especially if you um, uh, if decoupage or you scrapbook these are beautiful and as I said I think there's 10 pieces in this little pack and I think it turned out to be about five dollars um, the artwork was the, the thing that absolutely turned my head as you all know I've been a William Morris fan since I was a little girl um, and the only stuff that I've ever picked up that's been of quality um, has been in the UK um, you get reproductions here but they're not very good normally um, and the price of them you, you'll, you'll pay over the you know out of the ordinary for them the items that I picked up here uh, the artwork is absolutely beautiful the quality is gorgeous um, they come in different sizes so depending on what you want these are honestly they're beautiful they are like I said they're like a canvas material the colors are true just I was so impressed with these so when the lady she's been caught contacted me for quite a while now for me to do a Timu haul and I said it's really not for me it's not the stuff that I use I'm not going to you know promote things that I wouldn't use so she you know give her a do she said what type of things do you like and I told her and she told me key in the, these words on the website and this is what I found so honestly completely and utterly surprised by the quality um, so that's why I'm going to be moving ahead with that but um, I will go into more detail with the stuff that I've picked up where you can get it um, and the prices I paid in another video but like I said absolutely thrilled and <laughs> pleasantly surprised with uh, the stuff that I've picked up honestly this little box couldn't have been easier I wanted to make little compartments so I got some foam board foam core board measured the space and the depth and then just cut out these little pieces and glued them in to give myself little compartments the next thing I did was paint it all black with my trusty uh, black chalk paint and honestly it turned out so beautiful
these vintage inspired crock pots again the trusty black chalk paint um, I want it, I love the colour I love the contrast with the black and the um, brick colour so I just painted out the centre I was going to use a chalk marker but instead I used my Cricut machine and gave it a proper old vintage look uh, with just some stickers So I did paint them all the same. I painted out the little circles on the front and then, as I said, I was going to use um, um, a chalk marker, but ended up using my Cricut machine. And I just did the numbers on the back with the little crowns, which is very reminiscent of how the uh, vintage Crocs were um, aged and, you know, uh, the capacity. And then just put the numbers on the front. The numbers on the front I did in this like a, a very sparkly brick coloured vinyl and then of course the numbers on the back I used the black vinyl so um, these were the finished results. So this is probably the easiest and the most impressive artwork that I've ever done. Uh, painted the mats and the frames all in the black chalk paint. I Now the picture didn't fit within the mat so I used the mat as the background and literally just stuck the artwork in place this way. Um, and once it was done it looks absolutely beautiful. I am so pleased with how, this, how well this turned out. Well, I know I made some last week, but there's more coming this week. These came out of the bedroom. They uh, fit perfectly in the living room and I needed some to transition me until I put my summer ones back up. So I peeled off the last decor, got them down to the plain shades. And this was a pillowcase that came from the living room that I no longer was using it um, and it come apart on the zip and rather than repair it I've sent for some new pillow covers so I just cut it to fit the shade um, as you can see I've just stretched it out and I've glued it top and bottom and I've centered the pattern on the front the back piece I'm just filling in with another piece of the pillowcase cover um, and you won't see it because it is on the back again just a case of stretching it over as you can see I've pinned it into place then I glue it and take the pins out once it's dry and it's just a little bit of glue on the top around the rim and a little bit of glue on the bottom around the uh, perimeter of the bottom um, I then go over it with some trim that I already have on hand um, as you know I always collect trim and keep it and I just think when you're making these lampshades if you look at professionally finished lampshades they either have a trim on the bottom or some kind of trim around the top and the bottom and they do have them plain but it always looks so much better when they're finished with a little bit of contrasting trim so I went with the yellow and white as um, I had in the bird on the front and did exactly the same top and bottom So I had a couple of different choices for the trim, but I went with the lemon and the white. I just thought it picked up on the colours um, already in the lamp and it was a nice contrast. Again, just glued it all the way around the top 
of the lampshade and then sort of folded it around the scallops at the bottom just anchored it in place on one spot and then pulled it really taut and it just sort of fit the scallops beautifully again just using the hot glue gun Again, this is a really easy one. Uh, as you can see, I had these little uh, wooden boards that were 50 cents each. I painted them just black with the black chalk paint. It's definitely a theme this week. This is uh, Mod Podge. I've given it a, a quick layer of the Mod Podge. Um, I've done this actually just to stick on the, the paper, the botanical paper, but I do end up covering it all with a layer of Mod Podge as well and then a little bit of antiquing wax just to take the newness away and make it look like it's been around for a while but um, literally stick it down, cent centralise it and then press it down onto the surface being careful to make sure there's no creases and then just marking where the uh, it reaches the outer rim and then I've just got a, a like a heavy duty nail file but you can use a sanding block of any type and rather than cutting it just sand it off so it gives a nice um, finish and it takes the paper away it's so easy again I just went over it with the Mod Podge and a little bit of antiquing wax and added a little bit of the black velvet ribbon as a hanger and a little bit of a tail. Now I did a very similar process with the candles. These candles, as you've seen, I've used these in a lot of different places. Uh, these are the remote control candles that I have that were thrifted I've used them all over the house many different projects um, I'm doing exactly the same a layer of Mod Podge fitting the paper over the top uh, once I've cut the paper down to fit the candle I fill in the back of the candle where the paper doesn't quite meet with the leftover paper from that I've cut off again I once it's done I give it a coat of Mod Podge and a layer of the antiquing wax and I did this with both candles uh, with the pictures I did uh, a botanical and a um, butterfly and I did the same with the candle I did a botanical and a butterfly so that they could match These next couple of pieces are just nostalgic decor. All I did with this was I gave it a really good clean and then just put some antiquing wax, the darker wax, so it went into all the nooks and crannies. I might actually go over this with the gold at some point, but for right now I just wanted it to look more antique than uh, new. Um, and this picture again was one of the picture frames I thrifted for $2. I painted it with the black chalk paint, went over it with a very light touch with a gold gilding just to pick up the highlighted pieces and it's turned out really nicely. This next look is, I would call it English country, but I think in North America you'd call it Ralph Lauren inspired. Um, I have the disc, the... Um, bases uh, from the dollar store originally but I got it 50 cents thrifted and this little tweed piece of fabric was just something that I picked up um, 
well, quite a while ago it's just menswear that just looks really nice traced it and then fringed the edges and glued it to the base and this is going to be the base of my it's kind of like a wall plaque that i'm making so um, this is a disc i've just covered it in the burlap tied it at the bottom to give it a, a bit of a, a tail and then i'm taking the two a pair of the antlers um, gluing them together I've taken one and then flipped the other one over so they're not identical because they all go the same way but I want to give it the look of antlers on a wall um, so I'm gluing them together uh, once they're glued together I'm wrapping them in pieces of burlap just to sort of hold them in place a bit longer uh, a bit better and then I'm going to glue all this to the disc that is on the base if you're wondering what I'm using for the disc it's the lid off a candle so it's like a wooden piece um, I've noticed that I have a lot of like, candles left over from Christmas time and they've got these lovely wooden little pieces that I've used as the lids of them and I use them for all sorts I keep them for crafts so that is the basis of my um, for my antler decor um, you can see now I've just taken a big glob of glue and I'm gluing that into place. I'm taking another piece of the burlap and tucking it in. I'm gluing that into place to hold it where I need it to hold. So once everything's glued into place, as you can see, I'm just going to cut this burlap and splay it out. Um, what the look I'm going for is um, a kind of very rustic um, hunter's um, wreath type of thing um, these would have been very traditional uh, in the old houses uh, stately homes and the castles so I'm adding to this the feathers and some greenery and then I'm going to finish it off with a, a brooch that I picked up uh, while I was in the UK uh, probably last year the year before um, and it's a very traditional piece and I just think it looks so lovely when it all comes together The last piece today is my French country pillows. Um, so last week I did the side lamps for the bedside tables. Uh, over Christmas I did the headboard with the new cornice curtains. So this is the material that's left over from that. Uh, it's like a pink taffeta. And what I'm using as my template are my existing European cover shams which are the big square ones so what I'm doing is I'm using that as a template and I'm cutting four pieces of material two for the front and two longer for the back and what I'm doing is I've got the taffeta running top to bottom at the front and sideways at the back and the two back pieces are a little longer because I'm going to make a little pocket where the pillow fits inside so if you think about your regular bed pillows most pillowcases have that little pocket where you tuck it inside and stops it from working its way out while you're sleeping. That's how I'm going to be making these big pillows. I'm taking two, a front piece and a back piece, putting them good sides together and pinning them, uh, making sure that the fold is going to be on the inside when it's all finished. Again, once these are pinned and sewn, I'm going to be adding the trim, the, the linen trim from earlier in my thrift haul. So, as you can see, right sides together with the folded piece on the outside, so as you're looking down, you sew it that way. When you turn it back inside down, the inside out, the fold is on the inside. I'm going to show you how you make um, a frame for this pillowcase with the material. So you put the material flat down on the, on the um, pillowcase and you can see I've folded it back on itself pinning where the join is and then folding it back in the direction I want it to go so and then I'm pinning it again so I you fold it back onto itself mark where it joins on the corner of the material on the outside and the inside put a pin there and then fold it back in the direction you want to go so you've marked the inside of the fold and the outside and then you're folding it back and you're getting like um, a picture frame 
um, almost on the outside with the material. Uh, you sew those where they join and then I've just pinning it all down into place and I'm going to stitch all this on by hand just because if I'd have done this before I sewed it together it might have I could have done it but I wanted the fringe to show so this was to me was the easiest way for me to do it so I'm just going to pin it all into place and then go back by hand and stitch it all in have to tell me what you think but I'm really pleased with how they've turned out I like how it's a little bit different with the trim it's not an exact match and it all sort of seems to come together it's a little bit more French provincial but it's completed the look of the bed now with the new headboard the taffeta curtains the taffeta in the pillow and then the blue from the stripes in the um, headboard and the lampshades I picked up the blue in the trim 